Hello everyone, welcome back to Dolomite. Today we'll be discussing NextDC, ASX NXT. NextDC is an Australian information technology listed company that creates data centers to store the data of their customers, which are namely businesses. In this video, I am only going to highlight the bullish case and focus on the key points of strength of the company. Equally, I may make another video of the bear case or feel free to comment what you think the disadvantages of the company are now and into the future. Before that, it's good to get an overview of their financial situation. Next, DC has a market capitalization of $5.4 billion. In FY 2020, they reported a revenue of $202.5 million. They also recorded an EBITDA of $104.6 million and currently have about 1,400 customers. Their operating cash flows have increased by 37% to $53.9 million, which is a $14.6 million increase. They also have quite a strong balance sheet, which is critical for the type of business that they are in. This indeed will be elaborated within the second positive point later in this video. With this general overview of the financials, let us now have a look at the points of strength of NextDC. One of the strengths of NextDC is its business model. This picture is a good representation of the business model and general description of NextDC. These growth results show two things. One, they have good, but not spectacular, compound annual growth rate results of 28% all revenue. Two, their compound annual growth rate for underlying EBITDA is quite a good amount at 67%. In other words, this means that on a per unit basis, NextDC is making more earnings, is making more earnings compared to revenue. This is a reflection of how data centers are created and operate. It takes time for data centers to be filled with storage of the data and gradually over time, the revenue increases when the data center building continues to get filled. As the building gets filled, there is not much extra expense to operate the building, meaning that the earnings increases at a substantial rate. This is what is reflected by these two growth rates. And while now might be obvious when it pointed out, it is not immediately clear. This needs to be understood by anyone interested in investing in Next DC, since it means that one should truly look at the long term direction of Next DC, since it will take time since it will take time to fill the building with capacity. This, in fact, is quite clearly illustrated by looking at a case study example of the first Sydney data center, logically named S1. In this case study, it can be seen that it takes time for the S1 building to be utilized. Here, it took about five years to reach significant capacity and seven years to reach maximum capacity. As the utilization grows, so does the revenue. And similarly, as the revenue grows, you can see that the EBITDA margin not only grows, but it is growing at a very substantial rate, reaching 74% at the end of FY 2020. This clearly reflects what has been described in the previous image with the revenue and EBITDA graphs. So we have stated that the buildings earn high EBITDA margins in a couple of years as long as they are utilized and the revenue growth rates remain decent. The final point that we have to identify is that it requires is that it requires significant upfront capital to build the actual building. Now this is our current situation. The picture is that they build a building and then over time get growing higher and higher EBITDA that then levels out. That is, they have a property in the form of a building that produces fairly steady and recurring income. This, in fact, is the literal definition of an REIT, so a real estate investment trust, 
and is in fact a way that one should view next DC. They are literally building for the future if one takes that view. The requirement of large amounts of capital up front to create a building leads us to the second positive point of Next DC. The company has quite a strong balance sheet. Next DC has $893 million in cash, which is evidently a significant amount. Property, including land and buildings, are of $854 million, and plant and equipment are of $704 million. In FY2020, they had total liabilities of $976 million. Significantly, they recently announced an increase to their debt facilities. These facilities last for five years and include an $800 million term loan facility, a $400 million capital expenditure facility, and a $650 million revolving credit facility, which is multi-currency. From this information, they clearly have sufficient access to capital, either through cash or agreed facilities to fund the upfront capital intensive development of additional data centers. It should be noted that the third type of facility is the most interesting in that it is a $650 million revolving credit facility which is multi-currency. What does this mean? First, it means that NextDC can borrow, repay, and then borrow from the facility in a repeated fashion. This gives greater flexibility to the extent that the $650 million facility can be used. Second, the fact that it is a multi-currency facility could possibly suggest that there might be an expansion to international markets. Or at the very least, they are keeping that option open and easily attainable by getting a multi-currency facility. With all this said, is the next DC team actually executing on deals and developing to use all of this capital that they have? This is necessary to ensure that the business model slash thesis continues to operate in the even longer run. This leads us to the third point in that Next DC is growing and developing and not remaining stagnant. In this diagram, you can see that black represents the amount built, dark gray represents the build in progress, and the lighter gray is the amount that is planned to be built in the future. Clearly, the main areas that Next DC work in are New South Wales and Victoria. You can see in the contracted utilization that as a percentage, New South Wales and Victoria are being used efficiently, with in fact Victoria being overutilized. However, the M2 data center is progressing well and they have expanded capacity in the data center so it should be able to handle this excess amount. The three remaining states need to get better at using the power built, as when looking at the percentages, they are not that great, though they are indeed smaller markets. If you look at the total column, you can see that as a percentage of the power built over the total power planned, so 78.8 over 246.1, they have only built 32% approximately. If they are able to execute on their strategy, there is indeed still much more room to grow. Overall, this is Next DC and the three main advantages as a company. This is the type of investment that I would consider as a buy and forget with only looking at it if they are meeting general targets and heading in the right direction. Of course, it would be interesting to have a look at the disadvantages of a company and if you have any, 
drop them in the comments below or alternatively, I might make a video on that later.